Well, welcome everyone and welcome to the Pennsylvania Association College for Admission Counseling Keystone Virtual College Exploration. This program is a partnership between PACAC and StriveScan and we're happy to welcome you today. A few housekeeping tips before we get started. If you have questions for the panelists and the presenters, please enter them in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. This presentation is brought to you in Zoom webinar, so your camera and microphone will be muted for the duration of the presentation. Additionally, if you'd like to view a recording of this session, you'll be able to on the PACAC website. That's also the same location where you can go to sign up for future sessions. We have sessions running from now until November 6th. So if you're interested in viewing additional sessions or viewing recordings, you can go to www.pacac.org slash virtual. And now without further ado, I will turn it over to the University of Alabama. Hi everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight to learn a little bit more about the University of Alabama. My name is Billy Rood and I am a regional recruiter uh, responsible for Western Pennsylvania. And joining me tonight is also Chris Paul, a colleague of mine who is responsible for handling Eastern Pennsylvania. So those of you tuning in from about the state college line to the west, um, I will be your contact person. And those of you about the state college line to the east, Chris Paul will be able to help you out. Um, as a regional recruiter, we are here for you. We live in our territory. We are based here. So we are here all the time um, to assist you and your families. So anything that you need help with throughout the application process, um, feel free to reach out to us at any time. Also, if you get an opportunity to um, travel down to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, we would love to know that so we can set up an in-depth visit just for you. So if you're planning on making a campus tour, campus visit, please reach out to Chris or I so we can make the most of your time when you're down there. We can hopefully set you up with some individual appointments that might be useful to you, get you some meal tickets um, in the cafeteria, have you meet with some students or possibly faculty too. So again, make sure you, uh, you keep us in the loop if you're planning to visit so we can make the most of your trip down to campus. We also have what we call Tide Chat availability. So after tonight, if you still have questions and maybe you and or your family want to kind of meet with us through Zoom again, or even just a phone call, um, we have Tide Chat availability that you can sign up for on our website at gobama.ua.edu. And if you go under find your recruiter, you can find Chris or myself and see our availability to schedule Tide Chats. We are of course always um, available if you want to text us, email us or call us at any time as well for just a general quick question. We are here to help you. And hopefully if things go well in the world, uh, summer will be back to normal. And if so, we also do uh, what we call send off parties where we get everybody together from our local area and we do a little send off to the freshmen who are going down to Alabama. So that um, lets you get to know other people in your territory, lets you get to know us a little bit better and uh, we can make some, some good networks and connections that way. So again, feel free to reach out to us at any time. At the end of our presentation, we will have our contact information up for you if you wanna take a screenshot or write it down um, and we are happy to help. So at this time, I'm gonna welcome Chris Paul. He's gonna go through a little presentation for you to help you see if the University of Alabama will be a good fit for you. And I'll be in the background if you have any questions. Um, I'll do my best to um, be answering those as Chris is, is talking tonight. Chris? Great, <laughs> thank you Billy for that great introduction. Um, hello everyone, I I'm so excited that you were able to join uh, me and Billy tonight uh, for this online uh, presentation. Um, as Billy said, my name is Chris Paul and I am the Eastern Pennsylvania Regional Recruiter. Uh, the University of Alabama, uh, we both work for the Tuscaloosa campus. Um, I always make this distinction uh, because there are two other campuses in Alabama, uh, one in Birmingham and one in Huntsville. Um, if you are applying for uh, fall 2021 uh, to the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, you're only going to find it off the ua.edu website. Uh, if you're using the Common App, um, I did have a few students just, uh, last year who applied to the wrong campus. Uh, Birmingham is on the Common App, um, so just be aware of that uh, so you don't make that mistake. Um, <clears throat> the campus in Tuscaloosa, as you can see, uh, we have a total enrollment of a little over 38,000. That includes our doctorate and graduate level students. 
Um, the undergraduate enrollment is uh, a little below 33,000. Um, what's really unique about that number is 60% of our undergraduate population comes from out of state. Um, I think that makes uh, the University of Alabama an ideal environment for out of state students. Um, sometimes I get questions from students who are you know, feeling concerned that they're going to be isolated, uh, maybe feeling like you're going to be the only out of state student in a sea of in state students. Uh, and at Tuscaloosa, that is really not the case. Um, we have close to 16,000 students coming from all over the country. Um, that includes all 50 states. Uh, so there really is a lot of shared experience and then ultimately shared bond and friendships formed um, form because of that. Uh, we also have 76 countries represented internationally on campus. Um, so with students coming from all over the country and internationally, uh, it really is a diverse group of students. There's lots of different interests, uh, lots of different things for students to pursue lots of different personalities uh, on campus. Um, so it really is a vibrant uh, university. Uh, with that, we have 70 undergraduate majors. Um, and then when you include the minors, you're looking at a little over 200 degree uh, possibilities. Um, our most popular uh, programs by major are uh, beginning with the Culver House College of Business, then the College of Engineering, uh, then the College of Communications and Information Science. After that is healthcare. Um, I'd say the majority of our undergraduate healthcare students are either going to be nursing majors uh, or uh, pre-professional um, med medical students. Um, at the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, we do not have a medical university. Uh, the University of Alabama in Birmingham does have a medical campus. Uh, however, we do offer pre-professional advising uh, what that means is undergraduates will major really in any program that you would like to pursue. I, I think a lot of our pre-professional students will pursue uh, STEM majors like biology, um, but ultimately the decision is yours and you are working with a team of dedicated, of a dedicated advisors beyond just your academic advisors who are there specifically to get you comprehensively and uh, competitively prepared for any medical school that you want to apply to. Uh, after that is the College of Education. I think that uh, what we do the best at the University of Alabama is uh, remain committed to student success. Uh, this is going to translate in really two ways. Uh, the first most prevalently is going to be professional outcomes. Um, so specifically getting students uh, on track to start their careers after graduation and, and more specifically have jobs right after graduation. Uh, with that, um, the University of Alabama was recently named by Princeton Review to be the number two college in the country for internship opportunities. We are also the number one SEC conference university for internships. Um, I wanted to highlight uh, some of our current students, or as we call them on campus, rising legends. Um, first, we have Caitlin McTeer. Uh, Caitlin McTeer is one of our capstone men and women. Uh, Capstone men and women are the student ambassadors who work for the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Uh, Caitlin is a communications major. Uh, she is focused on sports media and sports broadcasting. Uh, I think uh, for communications, a lot of our students do come to Alabama specifically for that purpose. Uh, we do have partnerships with our athletic programs. Um, Caitlin specifically was able to work with Tide Productions, uh, which is the production company for our uh, Division I athletic teams. Uh, she also had an opportunity to do uh, an internship with the Warner Media Group um, in New York City. The other commitment that we make uh, to students uh, for success is definitely educational goals. Uh, so if you are planning on moving forward into graduate programs, either at the University of Alabama or elsewhere, uh, we are going to give you the best prep possible. Um, we also do have accelerated master's programs on campus. Um, one of the most popular is definitely our STEM to create a pathway to an MBA. Uh, that is for students who are high achieving. Um, so beginning junior year, uh, high achieving students will concurrently finish their undergraduate, uh, either in a STEM field or a creative field, uh, and also uh, start earning credits towards their MBA. Uh, with that, the students are completing both degrees, uh, the bachelor's for undergrad and the master's MBA in five years. Uh, Joel German is one of our accelerated master's programs, students on campus. He is also a student ambassador for our Honors College. Uh, Joel is a hospitality major, and uh, during his time at Alabama so far, he had the opportunity to do an internship in Hawaii with the Yumi Restaurant Group uh, that was actually founded uh, by one of our alumni, or as we call them on campus, one of our legends. 
Um, so what you're seeing now are uh, student outcomes. Um, you will notice that we have a lot of students coming from all over the country uh, to get educated at Tuscaloosa. And then after graduation, we have students who are moving and working all over the country. Uh, if you want to stay in Tuscaloosa and, and work, it's a great environment. If you want to stay in Alabama or the South, there are tons of opportunities available after graduation. However, if you are uh, considering moving out of Alabama, out of the South, all over the country, we really are going to help you make those connections. Also with our internship opportunities, they're not just going to be limited to the fall and spring semester. Uh, we really do encourage students to do professional development during your summers. Uh, you have three summers that are really vital to your undergraduate career. So we really want you to take advantage of those. Uh, for internship opportunities, they are all over the country. Uh, in some cases, we also do have international internships. Uh, so for uh, Phil, for Pennsylvania students specifically, if you were coming back up to Pennsylvania, either wanted to work in Pittsburgh uh, or Philadelphia, um, we were able to help you make those connections. Um, also, if you wanted to work all over the country, we could help you as well. Uh, we have career fairs on campus, so we are bringing employers uh, directly to meet with students, including uh, employers from Fortune 500 companies. Uh, we also do have a really amazing career service center uh, that features 23 interview rooms, um, which are really great for students to either do in-person follow-up interviews uh, or virtual interviews. Um, it's a lot more professional than I don't have to do that in your apartment or in your dorm room with all those distractions. Um, so they're really, really beautiful facilities. Um, you also notice down here, uh, this is a graph from our 2018 graduating outcomes survey. Uh, we had 70% of our undergraduates report, uh, which for a survey of, of like this, it was a, a great turnout. Um, you can see that 65% of those students reported having full-time uh, careers upon graduation. Uh, we also have 20% of our students who are doing grad students, and you see the breakdown here. Um, some of our students even have jobs before they graduate. Um, you will see Lily Stradler right here. Uh, she is originally from central New Jersey. Um, she graduated from the university last year. I had the opportunity to work with her uh, during our information session in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania last October. Um, when I met her, uh, she had already accepted her position at the Audit Associates in Washington, D.C., um, which I thought was really amazing. And I think you're going to find that that is a typical outcome for our students that, that they are able to get jobs early and really have a clear direction of what their of where their future is going to take them. Also, all of our alumni uh, or all of our legends will have lifetime access to career services after graduation. I think that that's a very big distinction about the University of Alabama. A lot of universities will put a four to maybe a six year limit on the resources after graduation. Uh, but for us, if you're ever changing jobs, if you're ever looking for new opportunities, uh, we are going to continue uh, to be able to support you. Uh, this is another one of our rising legends, uh, Jane Gillette. Uh, Jane Gillette is an aerospace engineering major. Uh, we are also very proud of her for being named one of the top 10, 20 students, excuse me, top 10 uh, STEM students in the country uh, by uh, Aviation Week. Um, she's also had opportunities to internship directly with NASA and also the United Launch Alliance. Uh, most recently, she was in Cape Canaveral this summer uh, for the uh, recent space launch. As I mentioned as well, we do have international students on, on campus, uh, six, 76 countries represented. Uh, Matthew Berger is one of those students. Uh, he's originally from South Africa. Uh, you may recall a few years ago, a young gentleman discovered the largest hominid fossil in human history. That was Matthew, and, and we're really proud and excited to have Matthew and other international students on campus. Uh, so as Billy began to mention, uh, we are open for campus visits. Uh, currently, campus visits, campus tours specifically, are available Monday through Saturday. Uh, if you are planning on visiting the campus, especially if you want to come down this fall, uh, we highly recommend that you make arrangements early. Uh, we do have social distancing and other safety regulations in place. Um, so we really want to make sure that you're able to uh, schedule that tour. Um, you know, if you're traveling from Pennsylvania, we don't want you to come all that distance to, to not be able to do a tour. Um, Billy also did mention that we do the in-depth visits. 
uh, in-depth visits are an expanded visit opportunity. Uh, we can offer things such as facility tours. So if you, you know, wanted to see the College of Engineering building, Col uh, Culver House College of Business, Capstone Nursing bu building, we can help you make those connections. Um, we can also arrange meetings with uh, the advisors from those programs. Uh, we can also set up meetings with our student ambassadors if you want to uh, sit with a student and get that, their perspective. I think that that is very valuable. Um, really anything about the university, if, if it would be available. Um, what Billy and I would ask you to do is send us a list of the things that you would want to do during your in-depth visit. Um, in-depth visits are going to be available Monday through Friday uh, when those offices are open. Um, try to give us at least a two-week notice, um, but honestly, especially if you are planning on doing a visit this fall, we recommend doing that as soon as possible, again, because we do have social distancing um, in place, and we really want to make sure that, that there is availability uh, for that expanded visit opportunity. Uh, we also do have online visit opportunities. Uh, we do have a 360-degree photography tour. Um, the campus itself is a little over a thousand acres, and that uh, Photography tour does a very great job of allowing students to see online exactly what the campus is, is look, looks like and see all the highlights of the campus. Um, also, we offer daily information sessions. Uh, the Office of Undergraduate Admissions does have a session. Uh, you are getting a lot of that information um, from, from myself and Billy tonight, um, but feel free to register if you'd like to get more information. Uh, we also do offer program specific um, information session. So if you wanted to get more information about the different colleges, I highly recommend that. Um, they are run by advisors. So not only are you going to get a lot of great information, um, but at the end of those sessions, there is a live chat. So if you have any specific questions, that's a great way to get those answers quick. Um, we also do have a uh, capstone men and women uh, student question and answer. Um, so if you do want to get that student perspective online, I highly recommend that. Um, it's a very informal session, so it's really just an opportunity for you to have an online dialogue with our ambassadors. Um, since you will potentially become students at the University of Alabama, I think it is very important that you are able to get that student perspective. Uh, campus life at the University of Alabama uh, is incredibly active. Uh, for those students uh, with us tonight who are interested in Greek life, uh, University of Alabama has the largest Greek life system in the country. Um, so if you want to do Greek life, there really is no other place like it. Um, however, if you don't want to do Greek life, that's totally okay. Um, sometimes students are concerned that if you don't want to do Greek life, then you won't be able to find uh, your place at Alabama. And that is definitely not the case. Um, when you break it down, you can see it's a, a little over 11,000 students involved. Um, so that's 30% uh, of the university undergraduate population, which means that 70% of our undergraduates are not doing Greek life. Uh, for those who don't want to do Greek life, uh, we do also offer 600 plus student organizations. Uh, and even if you did want to do Greek life, uh, you are still definitely welcome and, and encouraged to participate in the other organizations. Um, I think for the size university, uh, the University of Alabama does a, an amazing job focusing on the individual student. Uh, this is going to translate two ways. Uh, the first is through uh, how we do our academics. Um, students are not officially declaring their major until you get to 60 credit hours. Um, what that means is you really have your first two years, uh, the 100 and 200 level uh, course level, to really do a lot of exploration. Um, you know, even if you come to the university with a specific major in mind. A lot of students uh, will change their majors anywhere from two to three times. Uh, even if you don't change your major, uh, students are discovering um, other interests, uh, particularly for minor consideration uh, through that process. Um, Lily Stradler is, is one of those students. Um, when she came to Alabama, she definitely had accounting in mind, um, but she was also able to discover cybersecurity early and ultimately that passion, um, that discovery grew into a passion uh, that became her minor. Um, so you really are going to have two years to really just try as much as possible and really discover academically speaking uh, and, and also professionally speaking uh, what your real interests are. Um, also, if you're coming to University of Alabama undeclared, you're not going to be painted into a corner, be forced to make an early decision. Uh, we really are going to work with you early, our advisors, to have that big picture conversation and just really lay down some broad strokes that are really going to lead uh, to an amazing pathway for discovery.
Um, the second part of that commitment uh, comes from our student organizations. Uh, this is really going to give you an opportunity to develop your own interest outside of the classroom, experiential learning, uh, and also form your own communities. Uh, as part of our freshman welcome week, uh, we have a, a, a giant forum to really uh, just let students know exactly what activities are out there and really encourage you to get involved. Uh, if we don't have an activity that you're looking for, it is also very easy for students to charter their own clubs. Uh, if you engage in that process, you are actually creating an early, ship, an early leadership role for yourself. Uh, when you think about what employers are looking for, leadership is, is one of the most valuable skills, no matter the industry. Even if you don't start charter your own organization, as you progress with our different student organizations or Greek life, you will find yourself in a leadership role. Uh, so that will also fulfill uh, that goal for you. Um, for housing, we do guarantee and do require all first year students to live on campus. Uh, we have three different style residence halls. Uh, the first is the apartment style suite style. The second is the traditional, which is a shared room and then shared bathroom by four by floor. Uh, the third is the double occupancy, which is a shared room. And then you and your roommate will have a shared bathroom. Um, the housing application priority deadline every year is February 1st. So students that apply uh, for housing by February 1st will be able to select their own housing. You'll be assigned an online date in May uh, to do that. Um, if you apply after February 1st, uh, then a housing assignment is going to be based on the preferences that you list when you apply for housing uh, and also availability. Um, all students who apply for housing will be able to put in a roommate request. So that will also factor into uh, that final assignment. Um, also, a big thing to remember is the housing application for fall 2021 is currently open. It opened on October 1st. Uh, so students who apply earliest for housing are going to be given those first um, online selection dates in May. Um, so if the apartment style suite style is something that you're interested in, um, I do recommend getting your applications in early um, or um, if you've already been accepted to, to move forward with your housing application early um, so you can guarantee that you're going to be able to get that earliest selection. Um, I know last year that Presidential Village, uh, which is Presidential 1 and 2, was selected uh, first. Um, that was also the case for, la uh, for the year prior and overall the apartment style, um, street style is very popular. Um, I will also tell you about the traditional um, there is a lot of value living in the traditional residence hall. Um, you know, I'm going to show you that, that the cost in a little bit. Um, the housing cost for the traditional style is actually, in some cases, half what the cost would be for the apartment style suite style. Um, the other thing that I have not mentioned about the university is uh, we are an R1 research university. Um, what that means is we have the highest classification uh, of, of active research on a college campus. Uh, we have doctoral, graduate, and um, what that really means for you is we do offer undergraduate research opportunities. Specifically, we have two research opportunities. The first is the Emerging Scholars Program. Uh, that is open to any student, any undergraduate student uh, at any major, uh, also at any grade level. Um, so you could start the Emerging Scholars as early as first semester freshman year. Uh, the first part of that is there is a class component to get you uh, trained as a researcher. Um, after that's complete, uh, our students are working as research assistants for our faculty. Uh, in some cases, that is actually a paid position. So not only are you gaining valuable skills, uh, but it is an opportunity potentially to earn revenue while you're at Alabama. Um, even if you're not going into a field that is research specific, we highly recommend students do research as undergrads. Um, it's really gonna help cultivate your critical thinking and also your creativity skills, which are the other two big skills that employers are looking for. Um, it also gives students an opportunity as undergraduates to get published. Uh, that could really help bolster either your resume uh, or your graduate school application. It also gives you an opportunity to form an early partnership with your faculty, uh, which then in turn could translate to great recommendations, either for professional or for graduate programs. Uh, we also have the Randall's Research Scholars Program which is uh, part of the Honors College. Um, to get to Randall's, first you would need to apply to the Honors College. Um, students who are accepted to the university will be able to access the Honors College application online. Uh, if you are an incoming first year student, the requirements for honors would be a 3.5 or higher GPA. Um, then uh, they are in the process of revising this, um, but currently the test, uh, 
test requirements would either be a 30 ACT uh, or for the SAT would be a 1360. Um, if you are not accepted initially or decide not to apply to honors initially, uh, students, current students who have completed 12 credit hours, which is essentially the end of your first semester, will be able to apply to honors. Uh, with that application, the consideration is going to be a 3.5 or higher GPA uh, earned at Alabama. Uh, Randall's Research Pro Scholars Program is an undergraduate research opportunity. It is very similar to Emerging Scholars. Um, the big difference is a lot of the research they do is computer-aided research. Um, so if you're thinking about doing analytical or data research, uh, you know, potentially for business students, um, it's a great opportunity. Um, it is open to every major as well. Um, and the way that you would get there is get accepted to honors, and then you would complete the application for the Randall's Research. Um, the other thing uh, about doing research is I, we just really want you to be connected to our, our faculty. Our faculty are very generous with their time. Uh, they are able to keep open office hours. They really encourage students to make those connections. You know, even if you're not doing research, they're going to be there for you. Uh, we have a 23 to 1 teacher-student ratio. Um, I've also heard from students, uh, specifically from Lily, that if the faculty or if you're not available when the faculty are available, they're really going to go out of their way uh, to, to make that connection to have a meeting with you. Um, also with our activities, uh, if you're interested in, in athletics, we do offer um, separate of the collegiate athletics uh, club sports. So it's a formal experience where you're practicing and still traveling and competing against other universities. We have the intramural programs. Um, intramurals are informal sports leagues uh, that our students compete against each other. The other thing that's really amazing is our some of our faculty do participate in the intramural programs, which I think is really cool because it really does give our students uh, an opportunity to form friendships with their faculty outside of, of the classroom. And I think it really cements the commitment um, that our faculty make to our student body. So um, the last thing I want to talk about tonight is the admissions process. Uh, we, we are proud uh, to announce that uh, as of last week, um, the University of Alabama is test optional for fall, spring, and summer 2021 semesters. Um, so uh, when you apply, if you decide uh, you want to be test optional, um, you're going to need to indicate on your application uh, that you don't have a test score. Uh, and we will move forward uh, with uh, the review that's going to be based on your official high school transcript. Um, you, so you will need to make arrangements to have uh, your guidance office send us your transcript. Um, if you have already applied and have not tested yet, um, then to contact Billy and I, and we'll be able to explain how you can uh, indicate that you want a test optional review. Um, we do offer a lot of really amazing out-of-state merit scholarships. Uh, what you are seeing here are our automatic out-of-state merit scholarships. Um, these scholarships are still in place. Um, so if you have had an opportunity uh, to test, we do encourage you to submit your test score. Um, for the admissions process, if you do submit a test score, um, it will the lower score will not negatively impact your application review. And it will also give you an opportunity potentially to earn this scholarship. Um, the way you're gonna get the automatic scholarship is if you have the GPA and the test scores you see listed, then you would automatically receive that level scholarship. Uh, once you've been accepted to the University of Alabama, um, students will still have the opportunity to retest. Um, so if you did wanna retest for uh, either qualification for the automatic scholarship or for a higher scholarship, um, if you're taking the ACT, you'll have until the February uh, 2021 date. If you are taking the SAT, then you will have until the December uh, 2020 uh, date. Um, we have also expanded our scholarships this year uh, for students that are applying test optional. Uh, we encourage all students after they get accepted to apply for our competitive scholarships. Uh, the priority deadline for the competitive scholarships is January 15th. That means that you want to get accepted to the university and then leave yourself uh, enough time as an accepted student to apply for those scholarships. Uh, there are two levels of competitive scholarships. The first are the competitive scholarships. Uh, those are made up with the academic merit scholarships, alumni scholarships, and also some special interest scholarships. 
Um, when you complete the competitive scholarship application, it is one application for multiple scholarships. So you will be reviewed for any scholarship that they would be eligible for. And we do have students who do receive multiple uh, competitive scholarships. Um, those are smaller level scholarships. They typically are anywhere from 250 to 2,500. Uh, we have also completed, uh, we've also created this year the academic uh, competitive scholarship. Um, that is a larger scholarship that is equivalent to the amounts you see for the automatic scholarship. Uh, the review for that and all the competitive scholarships is going to be based on your core GPA. Uh, your core GPA is essentially all of the grades from the credit requirements that we have for the application. Um, that review is also going to be a weighted review. Uh, and then when you complete the competitive scholarship application, there are also six uh, short answers that will also be considered in that review. Um, even if you have completed uh, a test score, we do encourage you to apply for the competitive scholarships. Um, you might have tested, but maybe did not test to the levels that you see here for the automatic uh, and are concerned about an opportunity to try to retest. So in lieu of having to do that, we will review you uh, based on the criteria that I mentioned for the competitive academic scholarship. Uh, if you have any questions, hopefully you're, you're able to ask Billy and I tonight. Uh, if we aren't able to answer your questions, we do encourage you to, to contact us so we can explain this a little bit further. Um, you also see on this page the cost breakdown. Uh, this is the out-of-state cost. Um, I think you're going to find that the tuition cost is going to be consistent for your uh, duration of your undergraduate career. However, the room and board cost is really going to fluctuate. Um, like I mentioned before, that is the cost for uh, the apartment style suite style. So if you did choose the traditional style, uh, you, you would be saving money. Um, also, after first year, uh, the majority of our students do live off campus in Tuscaloosa. Uh, Tuscaloosa is a small to medium-sized city. It's a very active city. There's a lot of entertainment. Uh, there's a lot of cultural activities. Uh, if you like outdoor activities, we have the Black Warrior River that runs right through uh, Tuscaloosa. Um, so there's a really amazing resource. Um, off campus is also very inexpensive. The average one bedroom is anywhere from four to five hundred dollars. Um, so a lot of our students do choose to live off campus after first year because there is a lot of value. Uh, we do have on campus housing opportunities, um, but a lot of our students, because they're saving money, do want to live off campus. So this is just a reiteration of the, some of the important dates that I mentioned. And uh, now I would like to open it up to see if there are any questions that Billy and I can help you with before we end. Billy, do we have any questions coming in? Hey, Chris, you did such a good job. <laughs> right, thank you. Uh, we, we did have one uh, question about scholarships and specific types of scholarships. Um, and just to reiterate what you said earlier, um, we do have one scholarship application. You'll have access to that right after you get admitted um, from the admissions office. You'll have access to complete what we call the scholarship application. You will, um, the first part of that is, is basically a resume, um, some essays. We really say this is a place for you to just brag about yourself. Tell us your situation. Tell us if you have um, some kind of special circumstance at home. Tell us all of the great things that you've done at school. This is where you can really show us who you are. That one application will be reviewed by everybody on campus who has scholarship funds. So don't worry, don't feel like you have to apply for different scholarships by, with different applications. It is one application. Um, there are some specific scholarships that you'll see on that application that if you qualify for, you can then submit, um, you know, what they request for that. But again, it is just that one application and it will be reviewed by everybody who has funding available. Um, I also, I forgot to mention, um, but we also do offer uh, current student scholarships. Uh, so once students complete uh, their first year at Alabama, uh, you will be able to apply for additional academic merit scholarships uh, and also uh, some special scholarships. 
Um, if you are coming to the university with a scholarship as an incoming uh, first year student, you will still be eligible to apply for additional scholarships. Uh, if you are not coming to the university with um, a, a scholarship, uh, that is a great way that our students are able to earn funding as you move forward uh, with your career at Alabama. Um, also with the, the two scholarships, the automatic and the competitive academic scholarship, um, if you complete this, the competitive application, you will be, will be reviewed for the competitive academic scholarship. However, our students will not receive both an automatic and a competitive academic. Uh, we will determine which is going to better suit you in the review. Um, you are eligible though to receive the smaller competitive scholarships. So we do have students who come with uh, say an automatic scholarship and then are able to earn those additional competitive scholarships. Um, the other thing I wanna to mention too is we do have financial aid. Um, financial aid is going to be based off your FOSS application. Uh, the FOSS application for 2021 it opened on October 1st. Uh, we do highly recommend if you are looking for financial aid to complete that application uh, as soon as possible. Uh, if that process gets delayed, uh, then potentially that could impact uh, the, the final amount of financial aid we're able, the University of Alabama is able to provide. Any more questions? And we know this is all pretty confusing, especially if you are first generation or this is your first uh, son or daughter going off to college. So that's that's why Chris and I are here to help you. So if this was all a little bit um, confusing to you and you're saying, what are all these different scholarships? Reach out to us, we can kind of walk you through that process. Um, but just keep in mind, the uh, key, key date is January 15th. Um, Chris mentioned that um, that's just really a great date to put on the calendar, make sure you've got everything in by then and you have your scholarship application completed by January 15th, that is the priority deadline. Um, doesn't mean that you can't receive scholarships after that date, um, but those are more based on funds available after that time. So January 15th is kind of that key date um, that you really want to mark on your calendar. Uh, let's see. Yes, the, the University of Alabama is rolling admissions. Um, however, uh, we are, our priority and um, dead, application deadline is May 1st. Um, and the, really the two most important dead, deadlines and the reasons why students are applying early is definitely uh, so they can apply for those competitive scholarships. Uh, and then also um, so they can apply early for housing uh, to be able to get um, those, those early room selections. So we did have a question come in um, about uh, recruiting for sports. And obviously we are a division one institution. Um, because of that, we encourage you, if you are interested in playing a sport uh, that is a division one level, please reach out to the coaches. Um, Rolltide.com is our athletic website. You can look up whichever sport you're interested in um, and find the, the coach contact and contact them directly. Unfortunately, that is one thing Chris and I cannot help you with is uh, putting you in touch with recruiters or putting in a good word for you. Um, nothing to do with athletics, unfortunately. So please either have your coach uh, reaching out to those coaches or you, you know, yourself reach out to them directly. And that again is rolltide.com. Well, since we have a little bit more time left and it seems like we don't have any more questions, um, I did want to also mention that the University of Alabama uh, does have study abroad opportunities. Um, typically, those are going to be semester long opportunities. We have direct enroll and direct exchange programs uh, all over the, the world. Um, what that means is you are essentially taking an equivalent course load to what you would be studying in Tuscaloosa. Uh, and regarding the credit, um, those credits are going to automatically count uh, towards whatever programs you are enrolled in at the university. Uh, if you speak a foreign language, uh, we do have programs that are language immersive. Um, if you don't speak a foreign language, we also do have programs that are taught in English, so you don't have to speak a foreign language to study abroad. Uh, we also do have short-term study abroad, which is typically during our winter and um, spring summer, uh, excuse me, winter and summer uh, recesses. Um, that is typically a class that has an embedded travel component. So it's faculty led, typically a two to three week travel component 
uh, as part of a class that you would be enrolled in. Um, also, if there's a specific destination uh, or a program that you want to do that is not directly credited uh, through Alabama, uh, we will try to help you with that, uh, that credit transfer process so it'll count towards your degree. Uh, if you have financial aid and, and or scholarships, we will also help you with that process to, to apply that to help pay for your study. Are there any last questions or anything else before we wrap up tonight? Oh, Chris, do you want to go ahead and put our contact information up? Um, Certainly. Yeah, so, thank you. I almost forgot. Yeah. So if you yeah, guys put that slide back up, take a screenshot or um, take down our information. Here we are. There we are. So again, keep in mind, I am uh, Western Pennsylvania and Chris deals with Eastern Pennsylvania. No harm if you reach out to the wrong recruiter, we will put you in touch with them. Um, we're also happy to help. We all work as a team. Uh, we just have our specific uh, areas that we are responsible for. So we will help you no matter what and we'll get you in touch with the right person. Um, I, I also, Billy, Billy mentioned this early, um, earlier, but I do highly recommend, uh, if you can, try to sign up for one of our Thai chats. Um, there's a really great way to continue the dialogue. Uh, we, you know, we do invite your family, parents and guardians to participate. Uh, you know, we really want to uh, help answer any other questions that you might have. Um, separate of the, the Thai chats, um, Billy and I are also doing a lot of virtual visits uh, to the high schools in our territories. Um, so if you haven't had a chance, uh, you can register with us or just register with your counselors. Uh, we would love to see you online. And then hopefully um, by, by the spring, we'll be traveling again in our territories. But well, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, and to, to leave, I always like to say, as we say in Tuscaloosa, roll tide. Roll tide, guys. Have a great night. Please, please reach out if you need any more help. Well, thank you so much, Chris and Billy from the University of Alabama. I really enjoyed learning more about the school and all that you have to offer. For those who joined us this evening, there will be a brief uh, four question survey for you to complete. So please share your feedback with us. Also, if you'd like to view the recording of this session or any other session from now through November 6th, you can do so at www.pacac.org slash virtual. You can also visit that same website to sign up for additional sessions in the PACAC Keystone Virtual College Exploration. Thanks so much and have a great night.